Uh, Fabrizio, it's good, no? Yeah, it was good enough, because it's good to know that you work with some really good bands that are playing here. Uh, alguém tem alguma pergunta imediatamente? Quando, quando eu yeah. falo em português, traduz. Quando eu falo em inglês, no inglês goiano, não traduz, entendeu? É por isso que pareceu esquisito aí. Uh, is everything okay with the headset? Yeah. Okay. É, meu nome é Eli, eu sou produtora cultural, trabalho com festivais em Brasília. É, a minha pergunta é voltada para o sistema de produção e incentivo... Não incentivo, mas de captação e financiamento no Canadá. Porque, por exemplo, eu estudei em Los Angeles um tempo, music business, e o mercado americano ele é voltado para uma sistematização muito privada. Sendo que, o Brasil, a gente depende muito das nossas leis de incentivo e muito do poder público. Eu gostaria de saber, já que o Canadá é uma referência global né, da, de assistência direta do governo, como que se funciona, como que se estrutura essa relação com a captação dos artistas, a captação cultura, do segmento cultural, não só artístico. I can take this, yeah. Please, Jim. Dan, Dan will start. Uh, thanks. Um, it's an interesting uh, question because, uh, actually, I think in Brazil you really have this interesting model that's quite unique with the Lei Rouanet, when you, you use this uh, cap, captação. Uh, in uh, Canada it's quite different because there's this uh, tradition, there's always been this pol political will of really investing uh, in arts, but in, in another form, Les Rouennais is also uh, public support, but we in Canada and in Quebec, uh, the main type of funding is direct funding like subsidies. Uh, so the government uh, in different runs different programs and according to certain criteria, uh, if a label wants to promote or produce an album, uh, can present a plan. And so, for example, my agency, Sadek, will look at the plan and see if it makes sense. And uh, according to the funds that they have in a year, they will give a direct subsidy to the company. But then something that's a little bit similar to the Lei Rouanet that's here in Brazil is what we call the tax credit. It works differently than in Brazil, but it's, uh, it's something that exists uh, for recording and for uh, show production. And so this tax credit in Quebec is based on uh, how much a company will invest in terms of, uh, of uh, hiring employees. And so uh, maybe my colleagues will have more info on the technical uh, side, but it's mainly the investment that's put by cultural enterprises in, this, in the employees, the, the, uh, the workforce, uh, this gives a certain amount of tax credit. So this is money that comes from the fiscal authority of uh, like a tax system of Quebec and Canada that goes to the, <coughs> to the enterprises. So you sort of have this double system of support, direct funding uh, according to certain criteria for, 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 for projects. And you also have the, the sort of fiscal uh, return system that we call tax credit. So, yeah. I'll just add a little bit to that because uh, I think Jean Philippe is pretty much talking about SODEC, which is one, um, one eight, eight, eight government agency that supports um, cultural enterprises. But there are other ones that, like for instance, SODEC won't give money directly to an artist per se, it has to be through a company. But there are, there are other. Agencies like the it's called the Cal Conseil des Conseil des Arts et les Lettres de Québec, so like the Arts Council of Quebec, they will fund directly to the artists, um, and then there's other federal programs that will either fund companies or artists directly. Um, usually, the way it works in in Canada is you have to like it's not like any artist will just get money no matter what. You have to have a certain reputation and profile, and you have to apply for, for these subventions, grants. You don't, so it's not as easy as just like calling the minister and asking for money or whatever. So it, it's, a, it's a system, you have to learn how to do it. Um, usually people will hire either their managers or, 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 or specialists who work in grant writing to or, in order to get the, the money. And you can get money for production of music, for studio time, for making demos, for, 
for uh, marketing and for um, producing shows and showcasing like that you could like an artist from Canada who's here now could apply for a showcase grant to perform at sim because they know that it's a professional marketplace and they'll be uh, industry watching watching the performances here so there's showcase uh, there's showcase funding there's tour funding so there's all, there's lots of different uh, avenues that an artist or a manager can explore and it really takes quite a bit you know you have to do quite a bit of uh, research and and kind of um, you know exploring to, to figure out the system but once you know the system then there's lots of there's lots of access I just wanted to add one quick little thing is uh, we're really, really very fortunate uh, because our, I would say the state and federal, so Quebec in this case, because we're from Quebec, and Canadian uh, grant system and funding system, in my opinion, is probably one of the best in the whole world uh, because it really does make sure that you're um, doing something. You know, they're not just handing out money to anybody, but at the same time, if you you know, start to, to, to do better, they, they increase, there's, there's, there's second level funding for when you get to a certain point and you need to go beyond that point. Uh, when you start getting opportunities, for example, to, to support a big tour uh, in another country, uh, but you're not getting paid a lot, but you're playing in front of, you know, 3,000 people a night, uh, it's a great place to invest um, and, and we're able to do that. So f for me, the biggest and most important thing, in my opinion, even though I have a record label, is actually not investing in the production of music, but investing in the um, b uh, broadcasting and the touring and the uh, sending the music out of where it comes from. Uh, I think that being present in the market outside of where you're from is the key to actually existing for other people outside your market. So you, you're talking about a second level of uh, funding. There's one of those second levels is uh, actually comes from private um, uh, private money because uh, like all the broadcasting, like all in Canada, it's a big country. There's a lot of radio stations and there's always a lot of every year um, stations by uh, each other. You know, like. A big station will buy buy many stations, and so a percentage of that the, the transaction will go in a big pot. Where and after that, there's criteria and all that, and you can apply to further your career. You know, and, and so the, one of the main criteria for that one is, is of course radio play. But um, you know, it's pretty it's pretty uh, once w once you've reached that level after that. Usually, your career has started, so it makes a lot of sense to continue the funding. So, so there's a lot of levels. Like you were saying, arts consoles are really good because when an artist wants to create an album or you know write something or maybe perfect a show or something, that's where you, the artist writes his own like his, uh, his artistic uh, direction, you know. And then after that, it, it goes to the enterprises, and then. Even after that, it's only to the enterprises, but it's um, yeah, it's very inter interesting, and uh, yeah, we're really thankful because you know I wouldn't have a company like that without uh, this funding, you know. And <coughs> we employ like 20 people. We're three business partners, and we we put 12 bands on the roads on the road all year long, employing tour managers, sound guys, etc. So so that's how uh, like we're talking about the tax credit for the show production, putting the bands on the road is what. Is the, the tax credit is what makes us live, uh, basically. You know? So yeah, it's really it's a really good system uh, to make stuff. Canadá, né? Só para dar uma, eu tenho acompanhado um bom tempo assim. Não é muito diferente, por exemplo, do que o Fundo de Apoio à Cultura de Brasília. É bem parecido com o Fundo de Apoio à Cultura de Brasília, sendo que tem dois detalhes fundamentais. Uma é que, quanto mais bem-sucedida é a sua ação, mais investimento você consegue receber. Eles apoiam quem dá certo. E aqui no Brasil, infelizmente, muitas vezes é um assim, quem reclama mais ou quem chora mais, ou quem está bem no começo. É, e o outro detalhe importante é que... É, e o outro detalhe importante é que é muito valorizado o cara que prepara, escreve, entende e, e procura, e o profissional que faz, os, que aplica para os fundos. 
para os grants, para as coisas que eles falam. Esse cara é muito valorizado lá. E, e, e é incrível assim, a, a possibilidade que eles têm. Ah, e o outro detalhe importante, que foi o que ele falou, é que o dinheiro do ECAD financia a exportação de... O, o similar do ECAD deles financia a exportação de música canadense. E o nosso similar do ECAD financia nada, gente. Né? Só fode a gente, na verdade. Então, é, tem umas diferenças básicas, mas, é, mas a, a ideia é bem parecida com os dos fundos estaduais de cultura, por exemplo, o de Brasília, que eu sei que é de onde vocês estão. Tem mais... de bastante opinião política, mas é porque é importante pontuar para eles entenderem a diferença e para a gente poder situar. Porque a gente tem uma ideia de que tudo funciona da forma privada e que não tem apoio do governo. Se não tivesse apoio do governo, a música do Canadá não iria tão longe, não, eu imagino. Igual a nossa. Lá em cima... Meu nome é Angela Lopes... Embora eu seja carioca, eu moro e vivo há 24 anos em Belo Horizonte. E reforçando isso que você está falando, Fabrício, até para vocês também terem ideia, é, como vocês têm níveis que valorizam ações bem-sucedidas, aqui é o contrário. Eu tive, demorei cinco anos para conseguir colocar no Brasil um, algo que eu estava fazendo fora. É, é o, o encontro é, Mostra Internacional de Violas de Arame que reúnem é, geralmente quatro violeiros de regiões distintas de Portugal com um violeiro que criou essa, esse sistema, que chama-se Chico Lobo, que é um artista com que eu trabalho. E nós, depois de cinco anos, conseguimos finalmente fazer o primeiro ano de ação. Foi super bem sucedido. O segundo ano a gente chamou mais artista brasileiro para estar junto. E foi, aumentou. E aí, esse ano, com as duas... Os dois sucessos, eles não aprovaram de novo. <risos> Quer dizer, agora a gente vai ter que partir para esse próximo ano é, atrás de resolver isso de uma outra forma, porque a gente tem público, tem gente interessada, está todo mundo quente, e vamos ter que usar a criatividade para ver como é que vai funcionar isso. É um, só um testemunho aí, empírico. É, alguém tem perguntas? Se não, tem uma. Você tem? Ali. Then, oh, I, just one thing to add to the point about funding models is, um, I think part of the like the philosophy behind the funding in, the, I mean, there's several different kind of uh, justifications. I think there's there's a cultural one, um, in particular in Quebec, uh, it's a it's a French speaking um, part part of of Canada, and so the Quebec. The, the society, the culture, pr um, it promotes Quebec language and culture because it's a, it's a minority within Canada. So there's like a cultural promotion aspect of it. And so culture, art, music become more uh, important for the identity of, of, of the, the, the province as opposed to just a business thing or, you know, it's, it's, or, or, or just an art thing. It's like a, a cultural thing which, which becomes political. On the other hand, um, uh, many of the of, of the funding bodies look for. It's not just arts. It's uh, it's 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 an economic investment because they've done studies to show that the more you invest in mu uh, music as a business, more money comes back into the economy. There's several studies that show the financial impact of investing in in music, and so most of the the, the granting bodies that you get money from ask for several you know when you when you get, after you get the money you have to show them you know you have to do a final report you have to show them all this stuff so it's not just like here's the money do whatever you want they want to see how the money works they want to see success stories and that helps that builds um, a profile that builds a business and the more you your business grows the more you should be investing in it because it it, it you know it's it's a successful it's like a return on the investment because there's money coming back in to the economy through you know th through the investment and on and the other point is because canada is such a small population and it's right next to america it's very important for for us to be competitive to 
to, to support our art so we can have big stars like Celine Dion or you know Drake or Justin Bieber I mean in order to invest into the system to compete with America I think you know that was that was always like a big part of the funding the, f the funding models in Canada and obviously like Brazil is a different country it's much much bigger population it's the biggest economy in, in South America it's one of the biggest economies in the world so I think it's a little bit difficult to compare it necessarily to, to what happens in Canada, but I mean, I think still Canada can be uh, a good example of, of how to support arts and funding, you know, to other countries. That's it. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Guilherme Lazari. I'm from Curitiba. Uh, I have a band called Urbanite, an, an indie band. Uh, my question is, uh, can foreign foreign people with permanent resident visa in Canada uh, also utilize these uh, gov government government fundings? Uh, I think there's a permanent, permanent resident. You can yeah, probably with a permanent if you you're Canadian. A, you know, if you, if, you have to prove if, a residency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a passport, <laughs> a Canadian Not a passport. passport yeah. no. No, you can't get a no. passport as a resident, as a resident, but okay. I think I if you're paying taxes in Canada, then mm -hmm. you'd be eligible yeah. for funding. Exactly, because yeah. money comes from there, right? So, yeah. great, thank you. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, how do you? I mean, how do you choose, or I mean, do you have interest in? Uh, foreign bands from outside of Canada. I know you mentioned that you you distribute or into the label like a band from Australia and stuff. But do you have interest in, for example, Brazilian bands, other bands from you know other uh, other places from the world? Like, uh, aside, I mean, I don't know how how do you do that that curation? I don't know. I mean, we're interested in good music. There's good music in Brazil. There's good good music in Canada. I mean. It's really just a question of like what their what their interests are. Like I'm looking for a good alternative bands. I'm I'll, I'm here to like see as many bands as possible. So I mean, yeah, it's just about good music, basically. I think on the uh, there's a big difference between. Uh, mainly what Michael does, which is like touring bands and signing bands to a label just because of the overall catastrophic nature of the current, you know, record, uh, like the sale of recorded music overall that's happening, like not just in Canada, but around the world. Um, I think that there was a time, uh, you know, when I started the label a long time ago when uh, taking a band from overseas and putting their stuff out in our country uh, you could sell a lot more and make you know the investment back quite quite easily. Um, now I think it's really hard to sell anything to anybody. <laughs> um, so you really have to choose a little bit more carefully. But Michael's bang on. It's really a question of the music, um, and there's probably you know really good music, really good songs, but also. Uh, feeling that that music has a place in the market. I think that that's absolutely essential. Um, a band can be amazing, but it can be not right for, for a certain market. So you really have to try and evaluate whether or not you think that that, that music's going to appeal to, to a big enough, you know, it could be a cool niche band, that's a fine, but um, it has to appeal to enough people to make an impact. Um, like, for example, I brought Planet Hamp to tour and people loved them. Had I put out the Planet Hamp record, I would have sold nothing. Do you understand what I mean? This is the difference. I, I put out uh, a band called The Cat Empire from Australia, and I knew right away that it was just, it, everyone could get what they were doing immediately, and so we sold a lot more. So I think that, you know, we have to be just careful, not chicken, you know? We can't be chickens. It's, it's just really not a good thing to do right now. Um, but we have to, you know, choose carefully and really just think about how this great music is going to appeal, you know, to the audience, and whether people will like, whether it can cross over to, to enough people and um, and speak to to the people. I mean, in Brazil right now, uh, you guys have like really amazing music, and you always have, um, but it doesn't get out that much. Um, and I'm not criticizing. I'm actually kind of sad for you guys. Um, there's a lot of 
you know, Brazilian music, which you can call like folk or roots or traditional Brazilian music and various forms of it, you know, modern forms of it or more, you know, traditional forms of it. That music does a pretty good job of, of getting around the world. I mean, you guys make incredible, you know, Brazilian folk music, but in the more new genres and emerging genres and indie genres, it's much more competitive, um, but there's a lot of good bands. And if you're not able to get out there and become very present in other people's, you gotta be in their face, you gotta be like there in their space and, and exist for them to, to really take notice of, of what you're doing musically. I found on this trip that all of South America's music and all of South America in general felt very isolated um, from the rest of the world's music community to me. Um, not entirely, but, but far too much for one, the quality of music that's made here, and two, the amount of music that's made here. There's like insane amounts of music, not just in Brazil, but all over South America. And if you take Australia, for example, where there was some Australians, there are Australians here, um, uh, and they're more isolated than you guys are in a geographical sense, but Australians are always moving. They're always outside Australia, and so they're always getting into people's face, and their music gets out. Um, I understand there's Central America, which is kind of like a bit of a Bermuda Triangle. You know, there's not much happening there, um, like in terms of modern music, anyway. And then there's that lovely wall, which Trump can build it or not build it, but it's still there, um, called America. And they really, you know, they don't really give a shit about anyone but themselves. So that's a, a really big problem. It's sort of what Dan was talking about before, about us having to compete with America, because they're right next to us. 90% of Canada's population lives f like an hour from the American border, so we're right there, and we can't get in. Uh, so it's very difficult, but the rest of the world is, is coming up. Um, Europe is probably way better, and Asia, and a, there's a lot of places you can go with your music, and it's important that you start getting this great music out there.